What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to check out one of the new features contained inside of Scatter version 2, the Mask by Image feature. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. Alright, so I created a video where I talked through all of the new features contained inside of Scatter version 2, which I will link to in the notes down below. But today, I want to focus on the ability to basically place objects based on a photo inside of SketchUp. All right, so we're going to start by creating a surface that we're going to scatter our objects on. So I'm just going to activate the rectangle tool. I'm just going to draw a rectangle like this, and then I'm just going to double click on it, right click and make it a group. And so since we want to scatter something that's contained inside of the 3D Bazaar, we want to start by clicking on the button for 3D Bazaar. And in this case, you're going to go and find whatever it is that you want to scatter. In this case, I'm using the Scatter Shrubs, which is just one of the free shrub models that comes along with this. So if I click on this, um, you're going to want to make sure I'm going to set this to the proxy because I'm going to render it in Inkscape. Um, I don't necessarily want this to bring in all the high poly stuff. Um, so I'm just going to select the option for proxy and click on import. Um, you may need to click on download first, but if you click on import, that's going to import this into SketchUp and it's going to create a new scatter composition that we can label. We're just going to name this SketchUp Logo. And so then we can go down and start looking at our options. And we want to go in here and we want to pick a host. And so I'm going to pick my grouped surface right here and click on done. And what that's going to do is that's going to scatter the shrubs inside of the scene like this. And so we could adjust our density using this slider right here. So we could have more or less of these. So I'm going to have a few more for now. But then what we want to do is we want to set these so that these only get added in a location that aligns with the SketchUp logo. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to come down here and we're going to click on the use an image as a mask function right here. All right, and so remember that when we use this, wherever we have white in an image, that's where it's going to scatter objects. So in this case, for example, I want to scatter these where the SketchUp logo would be. So I'm just going to select this image right here and click on OK. It's going to use that image to mask out where objects should and shouldn't go. And so we're going to want to come in here. We're going to want to check the box for display the texture because notice how right now this is far too small and we need to adjust this up. So we're going to bring the scale of our texture up. You can either just click and drag to do this or you can type in a value. So we're going to set the scale as well as the offset, which is going to set where this is placed on our surface. And so now what I want to do is I want to bring up the number of objects that are going to be created, but I think that they're going to be too big. You can see how they're kind of like scattering over the edges of this. So what I want to do is I want to bring the size down. So I'm going to bring the random scale down so that the minimum and maximum sizes are more like 10% to we'll say 30%, something like this. So they're going to be a lot smaller, right? Well, then we can bump up the number of objects that are being created in here like this. And notice how the placement location is being affected by this mask right here. So you're not getting anything outside of the SketchUp shape in here. And if you wanted to get even more precise, you could bring the scale model down even more. So you could set this to be a minimum of 1% and 5% or something like that. Then these are going to be a lot smaller. You could set this so that it places a lot more of them too. And then what I don't want is I don't want all these extra objects over here. So what I might do is I might paint those out using like a paint mask or something like that. So if we add a paint mask, what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to add a brush. And I'm going to paint along this surface right here. And basically what we're doing is we're creating a mask area. So what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to mask everything out where this is tiling right here. So we'll set this up. And click on done. And so for that paint mask, what we want is we want to click on the button right here to make it exclusive. So when we make it exclusive, basically what that means is that means that we want this to exclude um, anything in the paint area right here. So now what we've done is we've set this up where these scatter objects are being placed based on the light areas of this image. Well then you could click on the button for generate. And so I'm going to set this so that it's going to be render only. 
So I only want these to be placed in a rendering. And then I'm gonna jump over into my rendering engine that I'm currently using, which is Inkscape. And so when I bring this over into Inkscape, what that's gonna do is that's gonna render out that geometry as actual geometry inside of my 3D scene. So even though we've just got a bunch of proxy boxes over here in order to keep our performance going well, when we actually go into Inkscape itself, you're gonna see the actual geometry of those plants. But notice how if we look at the way this got rendered in Inkscape, this actually rendered out all of these bushes as actual objects inside of our 3D space. And so what we could do is we could go in and adjust the size of these, depending on what you wanted to see as well. But you can see how these are following along pretty well inside of our 3D space. So you can clearly see the SketchUp logo in here inside of this scene. And then if we wanted this to be more pronounced, what we could do is we could just adjust our scale back up. So we could set our random scale to something more like 5% and 10% right here, and then click on Generate. And then if you jump over into Inkscape again, you can see how this is very strongly showing your rendered plants in here in the shape that you had masked out. And so if we wanted to, we could also come in here and add a new shape off to the side and we could mask something else out with text. So let's say we wanna do the same thing over here. And in this case, I'm just gonna jump back in the 3D Bazaar again. And I'm just going to use, we're gonna use the shrubs again. So I'm just gonna click on the shrubs, click on import. And that's gonna create a new scatter composition over here. And in this one, we're gonna say text. So then we're gonna do the same thing where, hold on. We want to make this a group and then for this one we want to set this to be our host right here we're going to add a mask and this time i'm going to use the image mask of my text right here so we're going to set this to display where our text goes and remember we need to set our size so just click on the display the texture All right, so then we'll just do the same thing where we bring our scale of our objects down so I'm gonna set my random scale to be, um, we'll just call it 5% and 10% again. That seemed to work pretty well. But then we're just gonna bump our density way up. So maybe like 0 0.01 or something like that. And we may even set it a little bit higher actually. But then we'll do the same thing where we just mask out these areas over here and click on done. And we'll make sure to make those masks exclusive right here. Well then, if we were to click on the button for generate, and we're gonna make sure we set this to render only, what that's gonna do is that's gonna add those to your rendering. So now if we jump over into Enscape, it's gonna update with that new scene. So we get a very clear set of plants in here based on that image location. And we can even bump that up if we wanted to. So we could set the density to maybe like 0 0.04 or something like that, and then click on generate. Well then, that's gonna get even more pronounced. All right, so that's where I'm gonna end this video. I'll cover more of the new scatter features in future videos, but I'd love to hear from you what your favorite new feature is, what you'd like to see. So I'll also link to scatter on this page if this is an extension that you're interested in. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.